हेलो हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स हाय ऑल द ट्वेल्थ बायो स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज कम एंड जॉइन टू द सेशन हेलो हेलो एवरीवन कम एंड जॉइन टू द सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट ए वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून टू एवरीवन हाय so yesterday there was a lot of problem in completing the session due to poor internet connectivity so i couldn't complete the topic yesterday i regret for the same so i will repeat the same topic today first we will see the answers of the previous assignment see all the answers are well explained here it is available in your screen you can see the answers check your answers what you have done so we will discuss one by one very quickly the first question you have to identify the dominant and recessive characters among a set of different contrasting characters yes you verify your answers the different dominant characters are red violet green pod yellow seed now the remaining white terminal flower and dwarf all these are the recessive characters now coming to the question number 2 see in each problem there will be some hint given and here the uh, hint given is since the progenies are appearing in equal proportion it is a test cross and you know in a test cross one parent is heterozygous and other is recessive one so here axial and terminal the characters are axial flower and terminal flower you know terminal is recessive and you know a recessive character will be always homozygous so you can easily write terminal as small a small a and the other one is heterozygous since both the characters appear in an equal proportion so its genotype is capital a small a then you derive the same answer phenotype genotype everything that is in an one is to one ratio it will appear clear since it is a test cross now coming to the third problem see the third one here two plants one is violet and the other is white flowered one and these two plants are crossed together and here a hint is given in your problem that is the violet flowered plant is heterozygous you read your questions very carefully then you can identify what is the hint uh, given so here the hint given is violet flowered plant is heterozygous white is you know white flowered one is recessive violet is dominant so white the genotype is small v small v and for violet it is heterozygous so it is capital v small v then you write the gametes male and female gametes identify the phenotype and the genotype so phenotypic and genotypic ratio remains the same again one and one so it is also equivalent to a, a test cross clear so verify your answers now we are going to the fourth one the fourth problem since the ratio is appearing in an 3 is to 1 
you know 3 is to 1 phenotypic ratio is meant for a normal monohybrid cross so you know in normal monohybrid cross one plant is dominant homozygous and the other one that is recessive and we know that recessive is always heterozygous and the characters the phenotype selected here is one is an axial flowered plant and the other is terminal flowered one so axial flowered one that is homozygous pure line pure breeding a true breeding one so both the alleles are of same type capital a capital a and the terminal one that is recessive one so it is small a small a and the f1 hybrid that is monohybrid which is axial in phenotype because capital a is dominant over small a then the different gametes that you can write in the checkerboard and identify the phenotypes so three capital uh, uh, three dominant plant dominant phenotype you will get that is axial and one terminal plant is obtained so the phenotypic ratio is 3 is to 1 three axial is to one terminal 3 is to 1 and the other is genotypic ratio one capital a capital a two capital a small a and one small a small a that is one is to two is to one ratio now we are going to the uh, topics that we are discussing today so today we will go through the various topics mendelian laws then what are the reasons for mental success dihybrid cross test cross back cross and how a dihybrid cross is equal to the product of two monohybrid crosses and practice problems now after conducting monohybrid cross mendel came to some of the conclusions and based on that conclusions mendel formulated some of the laws and these laws that is known as mendelian laws of inheritance the first law based on monohybrid cross that is law of dominance so this law states that each and every character present in an organism is controlled by a pair of factors and when a pair of dissimilar factors or alleles present in a particular hybrid individual one of the allele or one of the factor that is expressed that will express its character and other allele get suppressed you know the expressed allele that is known as dominant and the suppressed allele is called as recessive and this particular law we can explain with the help of a simple cross here you know capital t small t two different alleles dissimilar alleles one is capital t and the other is small t present in this monohybrid individual the capital t allele it is expressing its character so the phenotype of this hybrid monohybrid becomes tall and the other allele small t it to get suppressed so this particular law this is known as law of dominance now coming to the second law law of segregation and according to this law you know each and every character is controlled by a pair of factors now what happens during gamete formation so during gamete formation during meiosis the allylic pairs will segregate or separate 
and the separated alleles will move to different gametes so as a result the gametes contain only one allele for a particular character there is no blending of alleles or blending of characters in the gametes so the gametes will be always pure and hence this particular law is known as law of purity of gametes now we can explain the same law based on the monohybrid cross again see in that monohybrid tall individual for example there are two alleles that is capital t small t and these two alleles capital t small t alleles they are seen together in the monohybrid individual and producing the character tall but during the formation of gamete during meiosis these two alleles capital t and small t these two alleles segregate or separate and it will move to two different gametes and hence when we are writing the gametes we will get to two gametes capital t one gamete contains capital t the dominant allele and the other gamete contains small t the recessive allele so during gamete formation the allelic pairs will segregate and move to different gametes so the gametes are pure and hence it is known as law of purity of gametes or known as law of segregation now what are the reasons for mendel success mendel succeeded in conducting the hybridization experiments and what are the reasons for mendel success see the first one the selection of an ideal experimental material mendel selected pea plants garden pea pisum sativum as the experimental material and it was an ideal material for doing hybridization experiments or cross pollination and controlled breeding experiments now you know mendel selected true breeding plants or pure line plants or homozygous plants and a plant can be made homozygous by continuous self pollination then it produces same character in all the generations so the second reason is selection of a true breeding or pure line plants then the he studied the inheritance of one character at a time rather than considering all the seven pairs of contrasting characters together he selected and studied only one character at a time very thoroughly and came to the conclusion very accurately then he kept all the records he kept the correct and accurate records of all his breeding experiments then he analyzed these results of his uh, experiments hybridization experiments controlled breeding experiments by using statistical methods and laws of probability and you know mendel selected uh, seven pairs of contrasting characters he studied uh, seven pairs and we had already discussed those seven pairs of contrasting characters in the previous session so all these characters all these seven pairs of characters that was controlled by genes and these genes they are seen located in different homologous chromosomes now each character that selected by mendel that was controlled by one gene with two alleles each character is controlled by one gene with two alleles and the character selected by mendel 
the seven pairs of characters studied by mendel that did not show any exceptional mechanism it shows complete dominance and there was no linkage among the genes there was no interaction or it did not show any incomplete dominance so it was easy for him to study the inheritance thoroughly and coming to a conclusion now we will move to the dihybrid cross you know the definition a cross between two parents differing in two pairs of contrasting characters in monohybrid cross we considered only one pair of contrasting character but here we are considering two pairs of contrasting characters so it is known as a dihybrid cross now the progeny obtained in a dihybrid cross that is known as a dihybrid you know a monohybrid is heterozygous for one pair of alleles but here dihybrid is di means two it is heterozygous for two pairs of alleles two pairs of characters double heterozygous now so mendel selected two characters at a time and studied the inheritance of these two characters simultaneously now we can see what were the characters studied by mendel so as per your ncrt textbook it is the shape of the seed and color of the seed mendel studied all the characters but the typical example here we are mentioning is shape of the seed one character and the second character is color of the seed clear to you now coming to the contrasting characters you know the contrasting characters for the first pair shape of the seed you consider the the contrasting characters are round and wrinkled round is dominant over wrinkled round is controlled by gene we will represent it as capital r and wrinkled is recessive represented by a small r clear now the second character studied by mendel is color of the seed you know color of the seed is just opposite of the color of pod that is color of pod is green dominant and yellow is recessive but here color of the seed that is yellow is dominant over green so yellow and green yellow is dominant over green color yellow is represented by capital y gene and green is represented by small y gene okay now mendel selected pure breeding plants for his hybridization experiments here also so it selected two pure breeding plants true breeding one the first plant is showing the characters round and yellow seed round and yellow seed the second one that is wrinkled and green seed so mendel selected two plants two pure breeding plants as parents for a dihybrid cross the first one the male parent that is round and yellow considered as male one then the second one that is wrinkled and green considered as female parent so you know when a plant is or a flower is considered in the female one see here pea plant it is bisexual flower so the technique we have it to follow is emasculation so mendel emasculated the wrinkled and green seeded plants in order to convert it into a female parent then mendel collected pollen grains from this round and yellow seeded plants and dusted on the stigma of the wrinkled and green seeded female plant so and produces the f1 dihybrids now all these f1 dihybrid progenies they were round and yellow in phenotype clear 
so and that means it shows characters similar to that of the dominant parent a round and yellow seeded f1 dihybrids are produced now next step selfing of f1 dihybrids to produce the f2 generation and in the f2 generation the progenies appeared in the uh, ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 and when we analyze these 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 there are there were four different phenotypes and these four different phenotypes are round yellow then round green ringled yellow and ringled green so total there are 16 progenies and 16 genotypes but we can classify these 16 genotypes or 16 progenies into four different types based on its phenotype so two progenies out of these four phenotypes two are parental phenotypes so what are the parental phenotypes here yes come with your answer round yellow and ringled green and other two round green and ringled yellow these are the new recombinations recombinant characters now see out of these 16 progenies 16 genotypes Nine will be round yellow in phenotype, and three will be round green in phenotype. Three will be ringled yellow in phenotype, and one progeny that is ringled green, double recessive. So, coming to the phenotypic ratio, dihybrid F two phenotypic ratio is. 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 and now coming to this dihybrid f2 genotypic ratio dihybrid f2 genotypic ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4 is to 2 is to 1 is to 2 is to 1 how is it possible Yes, it is possible, and it is easy for you to learn. Also, nothing to by heart it. See, we will uh, see the next slide, and you can clear. See the representation. How we will represent a dihybrid cross? You know, parents. The typical representation here: parents. One is male, and the other is female. Phenotype of the male parent selected here is. A round yellow, and phenotype of the female parent is ringled green. Now coming to the genotype, you know each and every character is controlled by one pair of factors. So the first character round, round is dominant over ringled. You know, so round is controlled by the gene that is capital R, capital R. We are representing by using the letter r one pair of gene so capital r capital r now consider the second character yellow and green yellow is dominant over green yellow is controlled by or represented by the gene capital y capital y clear so capital r capital r and capital y capital y since these plants are true breeding it is homozygous that is why we are writing capital r capital r and capital y capital y clear to you now consider the genotype of ringled one ringled green the female parent it is smaller smaller and small y small y double recessive recessive for both the characters okay now coming to gamete formation so during gamete formation the allylic pairs segregate according to law of segregation the allylic pairs will segregate here also so capital r capital r the first pair 
it will segregate and move to two different gametes now consider the second pair of alleles that is capital y capital y it will also separate and entering into the gametes two different gametes so we are getting two different types of gametes here that is capital r capital y and capital r capital y two gametes we got and both the gametes are same type because it is homozygous clear to you now consider the female parent the genotype is small r small r small y small y during gamete formation these gene pairs will segregate separate and move to different gametes so each gamete contains one allele for one character clear so small r small y and small r small y okay now these gametes will fuse male and female gametes fuse together and forms the f1 hybrid and this f1 hybrid is heterozygous for two pairs of characters see capital r you uh, consider the first character first you consider the first character that is capital r then you write the other allele alternative allele small r then consider the second allele capital y and small y don't write a capital r capital y then small r small y okay so here you write first you consider the capital letter which is the first capital letter capital r then its alternative letter is small r so capital r small r then goes to the next letter that is capital y small y clear to you so uh, hybrids the both the uh, hybrids produced here represented here or all the hybrid progenies they are heterozygous for both the pairs of alleles so we will call it as a dihybrid now what will be the phenotype of this dihybrid it is a round alloy in phenotype how it happens it happens based on which law that is law of dominance so capital r is dominant over small r so it becomes round and capital y is dominant over small y so it becomes yellow in phenotype so the f1 dihybrid that is yellow round and yellow in phenotype clear to you now f1 on selfing these f1 progenies are subjected to self pollination to produce the f2 generation see here the these progenies f1 hybrids are allowed to breed among themselves so we are representing here like this capital r small r capital y small y into same genotype capital r small r capital y small y now how these gametes are separating see here you can see the gamete separation how gametes are formed very important concept it must be clear to you people see the f1 dihybrid having the genotype capital r small r capital y small y it will segregate consider the first pair of character that is capital r small r the first pair you consider see it is segregate and we will write it as capital r and small r here capital r and small r see clear to you then now goes to the second pair second pair is capital y small y clear now we will write this capital y small y like this this is fork method we are bifurcating this one first we have considered the first pair what is the first pair capital r small r clear to you so that we have written like this at a distance then bifurcate it for the second pair of alleles so capital y small y also we will separate and write like this clear to you and for both these alleles it is written in this pattern fork method then you write like this capital r capital y capital r small y small r capital y and small r small y 
So, how many different types? Four different types of gametes are produced. Clear to you? So, uh, when we are considering this uh, monohybrid cross, you know, they are uh, the hybrid is heterozygous for one pair of character. Or it is heterozygous for one pair of alleles. So, if uh, an individual is uh, heterozygous for one pair of uh, character, then they are present two gametes. Yes or no? Capital T, small t, the F1 hybrid, it produces two gametes, capital T and small t. So, one pair ke liye heterozygous hai, to two gametes milega. Two pairs ke liye heterozygous ho gaya to four gametes milega. Clear to you? So, we can come to the general formula to write the gametes 2 raised to n. Clear? Where, what is n? Where n stands for number of pairs of characters. For example, 2 raised to 2. For a dihybrid cross, we will write it as 2 raised to 2. That means, where a 2 stands for 2 pairs of characters. So, that is written as 2 into 2. That means how many gametes? 4. Suppose it is 3 characters. Heterozygous for 3 characters. Then how we will write? Yes. Come with answer. 2 raised to 3. So, 2 raised to 3 means 2 into 2 into 2. That means how many gametes? 2 into 2, 4. 4 into 2, 8 gametes. So, like this, you can... Come to the conclusion and the general formula to write the number of gametes 2 raised to n. Where n represents the number of pairs of characters. Clear to you? Okay. Then, see, so uh, the F1 on self-pollination, we got these four different types of gametes. Capital R, capital Y. Capital R small y, then small r capital Y, and small r small y. So these are the four gametes produced by one parent. And these are the four gametes produced by the other parent. Clear? This is a very important step. Agar ye step galat ho gaya to problem galat ho gaya. Clear? So here, you listen first. See, this particular capital R gene... It can combines with, it can goes with the capital Y. You listen again. Capital R can combines with the capital Y. Similarly, capital R can go along with the small Y also. Clear? Now, consider the second allele, that is small r. Small r can go along with the capital Y. And small r can go along with the, or combines with the small Y. So, for Gametes, four options. Now, this is at another representation. See, suppose it is a trihybrid. See, uh, this problem is there in this skin color. In multiple gene effect, quantitative inheritance, there the uh, F1 individual is hybrid for uh, three characters. So, trihybrid. So, it is heterozygous for three pairs of alleles. First, second and third. Three pairs of alleles characters, it is heterozygous. So, it is a trihybrid. So, in that case, what we will do? Yes, listen here. First, we will take the first pair, capital A and small a. So, this capital A and small a, we have written at a distance like this here. Clear to you? Then, we will go to the second pair, which is the second pair, capital B, small b. So, capital B, small b, again we will bifurcate here. See, we will write along with the capital A and with the small a also. Now, we will go to the third pair, which is the third pair, capital C, small c. For each one, we have it to bifurcate again. See, how it is written. Okay, then you can write like this, A, B, C, capital A, capital B, capital C. Capital A, capital B, small c. Capital A, small b, capital C. Here it is, capital A, small b and small c. Clear? 
now coming to this one small a capital b capital c small a capital b small c then small a small b capital c small a small b and small c clear to you so this is how many gametes yes eight gametes are formed in a trihybrid formula 2 raised to n n here it is 3 so 2 into 2 into 2 that means it is 8 gametes clear to you bifurcation method now see the f2 generation f1 on self pollination produces the f2 generation and you uh, came to know how to write the gametes okay any doubts okay we are moving to the next f2 generation see here in the f2 generation you can see the male gametes we are writing on the left side and vertical side as per the norm and here female gametes on the top horizontal side for different types of female gametes and for different types of male gametes now fusion of these gametes it produces how many progeny is 4 into 4? Yes, 16 different genotypes are here. That means 16 different progenies are here. Clear to you? Now see how to write. Capital R, then here capital R. This male gamete fuses with this one female gamete. The genotype you see capital R, capital R, capital Y, capital Y. Here it is. The second one, see the second one, capital R, capital R, capital Y, small y. Third one, capital R, small r, capital Y, capital Y. See the fourth one, capital R, then you write small r. Then next pair, capital Y, small y. Here also, this is capital R, capital R, capital Y, small y. Capital R, small r, small y, small y. Capital R, small r, capital y, small y. Capital R, small r, small y, small y. Okay. Now, see this one. What will be the individual? Capital R, small r, capital y, capital y. Here it is. Capital R, small r, then capital y, small y. This one. Small r, small r, small y, small y. And Again, this is small r, small r, capital Y, small y. Clear? See, the last one here, last row, capital R, small r, capital Y, small y. Capital R, small r, small y, small y. Small r, small r, capital Y, small y. Small r, small r, and small y, small y. See? So, you should... Uh, see this combination of gametes very correctly very clearly otherwise when you are writing these genotypes there will be a chance for committing mistakes clear to you so very carefully you have to write these combinations very important now coming to the phenotypes round yellow this is round yellow again round yellow this is round yellow see why this becomes round yellow Yes, capital R is dominant over small r, so round. Capital Y dominant over small y, so yellow. Clear? So this one is homozygous round yellow. And this one heterozygous round yellow. Clear the point? So, so you can write these phenotypes in the columns. And you see here, this is wrinkled yellow. This uh, gene pair small r, small r for wrinkled. So, wrinkled yellow. And this one is also wrinkled yellow. But second pair capital Y and small y. See? So, like this you can write. And the last one, you see what is this? Wrinkled green. Why it is wrinkled green? Double recessive. Wrinkled green. And here you see... What is the phenotype? Round and green. Round, capital R is dominant over small r, so it is round. And small y, small y for green. So, round green. See, so out of these 16 progenies, we can 
classify into four different phenotypes. What are the four uh, different phenotypes? Yes, round yellow, then round green, then wrinkled yellow and wrinkled green. So, four different phenotypes. See, you can count how many round yellow are here. How many round yellow? That is nine round yellow. Then round green. One, two and three. Three round green. Clear the point? Then wrinkled yellow. One, then two and three. So, three wrinkled yellow. Then wrinkled green. Only one out of sixteen. So, what is the phenotypic ratio? These four phenotypes appear in the ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. And phenotype, that is, the phenotype is uh, 1 is to 2 is to 1, 2 is to 4 is to 2, 1 is to 2 is to 1. Nothing, you know the phenotype of, a, um, uh, sorry, the genotype of a monohybrid cross. What is the genotypic ratio of a monohybrid cross? Yes, come with answer. Very quick. 1 is to 2 is to 1. Now, here what you have to do is, you write 1 is to 2 is to 1 on either side. On either side, you write 1 is to 2 is to 1. Then, 1 is to 2 is to 1 ka double kya hai? 2 is to 4 is to 2. So, it is easy for you people to write the genotypic ratio. No need to buy heart it and get confused. Write 1 is to 2 is to 1 on either side. Or in the middle, you write the double of it one. That is 2 is to 4 is to 2. Clear? Now, how to find out the phenotypes? A simple bifurcation method here also. Here the character we had considered that is Round yellow and wrinkled green. So, the first pair you consider round, then wrinkled. Round and its uh, 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 recessive character is wrinkled. We can divide it into two monohybrid crosses. Round and into wrinkled and yellow into green. So, first consider the first character round. Round and wrinkled. Separate cardia. Okay. Then bifurcate each one and take the second character. Second character is yellow and green. Yellow is dominant over green. Dono me likhiliya. Clear? Then you write like this. Round yellow, round green, wrinkled yellow and wrinkled green. Okay? Now, a dihybrid cross is equal to the product of two monohybrid cross. How is it possible? Yes. See the single example, typical example here. Tall red, a tall plant producing red flower is crossed with dwarf plant producing white flower. This is a typical example of which cross? Yes, dihybrid cross. Now this dihybrid cross, we can divide it into two monohybrid crosses. Kaise? Konsiye? Tall into dwarf, ek monohybrid cross ho gaya. Dusare aagaya, red into white. Clear to you? Now, you know, tall into dwarf, this single monohybrid cross, what is the F2 phenotypic ratio? 3 tall and 1 dwarf. So, 3 is to 1 ratio mil gaya. Now, for the second cross, red into white, the F2 phenotypic ratio, 3 red, is to 1 white. That also we have written here. Now, 3 is to 1 into 3 is to 1. Multiply, 3 into 3, 9. 3 into 1, 3. Then, 1 into 3, again 3. 1 into 1, 1. So, what is the phenotypic ratio? 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So, the ratio, phenotypic ratio, 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 is Nothing else, but it is the product of what? Two monohybrid phenotypic ratios. Clear? Now, similarly, the genotypic ratio also. You know the genotypic ratio of this first cross. 
बोलो क्या है वन कैपिटल टी कैपिटल टी यस टू कैपिटल टी स्मॉल टी यस एंड वन स्मॉल टी स्मॉल टी सो दैट वी हैव रिटन एस वन इज टू डू इज टू वन हियर नाउ फॉर द सेकेंड वन वॉट इज दिनो टाइप यस बोलिए बोलिए जल्दी बोलिए वन कैपिटल आर कैपिटल इज टू टू कैपिटल आर स्मॉल आर इज टू वन स्मॉल आर स्मॉल आर सो अगेन विच इज द रेशियो जीनोटिपिक रेशियो वन इज टू टू इज टू वन ओके सो दीज टू रेशियो वन इज टू टू इज टू वन इन टू वन इज टू टू इज टू वन सो यू विल राइट वॉट वन इज टू टू इज टू वन देन टू इज टू फोर इज टू टू देन वन इज टू टू इज टू वन सो वॉट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इज यू राइट वन इज टू टू इज टू वन ऑन आइदर साइड सी दोनों साइड में वन इज टू टू इज टू वन लिख लिया देन बीच में क्या लिखा इस रेशियो का डबल लिख लिया दैट इज टू फोर टू नो नीड टू बाई हट वन इज टू टू इज टू वन देन उसका डबल टू फोर टू देन अगेन हाफ वन इज टू टू इज टू वन so the uh, here we have uh, learned two important ratios one is phenotypic ratio 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 and the other is genotypic ratio dihybrid cross 1 is to 2 is to 1 2 is to 4 is to 2 and 1 is to 2 is to 1 now we are going to the law of independent assortment it is based on mendel's dihybrid cross so the law based on dihybrid cross put forward by mendel that is law of independent assortment and according to this law the two pairs of traits that are present in a particular hybrid organism dihybrid individual the separation or the segregation of a one pair of the characters one pair of character or one pair of allele that is totally independent from the separation or segregation of the second pair of characters or alleles and now the segregated alleles or separated alleles they assort they unite they reunite at random and as a result there is the production of four different types of gametes and see here with an example we can illustrate this law the typical dihybrid progeny obtained in today's cross it is capital r small r capital y small y that is heterozygous for both the pairs first pair you know for a round it is heterozygous capital r and small r and for the second pair yellow also it is heterozygous so two pairs of alleles are here in this hybrid progeny dihybrid progeny now the segregation of this first pair first pair which one the first pair is capital r small r its segregation the segregation of or separation of these two pair alleles of this first pair it is independent from the separation or segregation of the second pair you know second pair is which one capital y y see now these is uh, separated alleles or segregated alleles they reunite according to their choice according to the probability so they produce as four different types of gametes and these four different types of gametes are written here capital r can combines with the capital y see here capital r can go with the capital y capital r can combines with small y also and small r can combines with capital y and small r can combines with small y so four different types of gametes are produced according to which law law of independent assortment clear now we are going to the test cross dihybrid test cross see you know test cross definition it remains the same an f1 dihybrid is crossed with a recessive parent or we are crossing an individual whose genotype is not known and we want to identify the genotype so
so we will cross such an individual with its recessive parent so see here in the studied cross diabetic tuberculosis uh, that we have studied today the f1 hybrid is round yellow in phenotype and the recessive parent is wrinkled green now what is the genotype of this uh, f1 hybrid heterozygous for both the alleles so capital r small r capital y small y and here the wrinkled green is uh, homozygous for both the pairs so the alleles are small r small r and small y small y see gamete formation heterozygous for two pairs dihybrid four different gametes based on law of independent assortment and here you got two gametes and both these gametes are of same type both contain small r and uh, small r and uh, this is small y see now coming to this uh, progenies combinations in the checkerboard in the pinot square male gametes four different male gametes produced by the f1 dihybrid and the gamete produced by the female parent we are writing only one gamete here because the other gamete is also of same type so no need to write both of the gametes if we are writing both of the gametes then also the result will be the same so since the gametes are of same type consider only or write only one gamete here for making the cross easy so now the progenies are see four different genotype you got and four different phenotype also round yellow round green this is wrinkled yellow and this one is wrinkled green so what is the dihybrid test cross ratio dihybrid test cross ratio is 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 you know mono hybrid test cross ratio what is the mono hybrid test cross ratio yes come on come with answer yes 1 is to 1 so here it is 1 is to 1 into 1 is to 1 so kya ban gaya 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 clear now see back cross crossing of an f1 hybrid back to its dominant parent so f1 hybrid round yellow with the genotype capital r small r capital y small y we are crossing with the dominant parent round yellow with the genotype homozygous for both the pairs capital r capital r capital y capital y so here the f1 will produce four different types of gametes and this one will produce two gamete and both the gametes are of same type it contains capital r gene allele and capital y allele now we are writing it on in a punnett square see for easy representation this is the male gamete produced by the f1 dihybrid this is the female gamete produced by the dominant parent homozygous parent round yellow see all these progenies all these progenies are round yellow in phenotype that means all the progenies are dominant in phenotype in the in the mono hybrid cross also you have seen the same thing in back cross all the progenies were tall in phenotype that means it is dominant in phenotype so the same principle is concept is applicable here also in a back cross all the progenies appear will be dominant in phenotype clear to you okay now today's assignment for you people go through these problems very clearly and apply your mind and do it work out it we will check all the answers tomorrow see listen to the problem mendel crossed a tall pea plant producing violet flower with another dwarf plant having white flower so two characters two pairs of contrasting characters we are considering so it is a dihybrid cross so what is the nature of f1 and f2 f1 and f2 progenies ka nature kya hai phenotype kya hai work out using a punnett square easy for you people to do this problem now mendel crossed a pea plant producing axial and red flower 
again two characters with another one that is having terminal and white flower he found four different phenotypes among the progenies aisa ye dono plants ko aapas mein cross kar di to kya mila four different types of progenies mil gaya phenotype mein work out the cross hindi is given four different phenotypes are produced in the progenies that hindi is given in the problem so find out the genotype of the parents and the progenies now our third problem is a heterozygous plant again the hindi given is heterozygous a heterozygous plant producing green pod and around the seed that is crossed with another plant which is homozygous having green pod and round seed hindi is given one is heterozygous and other is homozygous find out the genotype of the parents and the possible uh, progenies parent ka kya genotype hai aur progenies ka kya geno- genotype ho sakta hai so try to find out the phenotype and genotype correctly using the unit square without doing any mistakes theek okay? hai so today's session is over we will come with a new topic tomorrow may god bless you bye